series record as you see the meeting and a 74 65 game but Terry Holland will be the first to tell you that their team turned around after that game that was when they put the final piece into the puzzle oh you can't do that Kent Needland, no you cannot do that and Hank Nichols no, is going to exactly charge right. it right what happens is the jumper caught the ball and you cannot toss it and the jumper catch it unless it touches the floor or another player. Billy, other I think Hank jumper. Nichols heard you. Well, uh, he doesn't need to hear me. Gary, this is the sixth time he's worked the Final Four, which is a record that he shares with Irv Brown. And if he were to get in the final game, he would set an all-time record. Alvin Franken, the All-Southwest Conference pick to get us. Michael Young, who's been in a shooting slump, shooting 36%, and that has to help his confidence. Well, it certainly ought to help his confidence. If you remember against UNC in 1982 when the Cougars got knocked out in the first round, he only had two points the entire ball game. Zone defense by Houston, nothing surprising. 2-3 with Elijah on in the middle. Carlisle off to Jim Miller, who was the MVP in the East Regional. Gary, one of the things, when you play the zone back in like that, it gives Virginia an opportunity to tempo the basketball game and keep it down to a low-scoring affair. This is exactly the kind of patience we expected from Virginia. Holland East off to Rick Carlisle. Nice block off by Michael Young. Excellent block out. Houston with a 2 to nothing lead. We've now played just a minute in this ball game. And Virginia starts in the zone also with Edelin worrying about Akeem Olajuwon. But that zone is packed inside the foul line. Akeem kicks it back out to Young. Follow attempt by Reed Geddes. There is Winslow, and it's rebounded this time by Polonese. And here comes the Cavaliers. Virginia really back in that zone, and that's about as far as I've ever seen it pushed back. Gary Holland says we must have patience. They've shown it thus far in the early going of this game. Well, it's easy to have patience, but they're not putting a lot of pressure on the ball playing his own. Jim Miller has been shooting so well. Akeem, the leading rebounder in the nation, has another one. And last year was the leading rebounder in the NCAA tournament. Reed Geddes, he and Franklin provide this Houston team with excellent outside shooting. Young's in difficulty to Winslow. Excellent move by Young on the inside. Now, what Virginia wants to do is to give up the outside shot, but they can't afford penetration of that style. That was Winslow's 54th dunk this year. He's second only to Akeem on the Houston team. Now you see Houston Franklin coming out a little bit farther out on the ball. Polonese, who said he wants to go right at Akeem, but he's going to have a tough time challenging Elijah Watt. Good screen on Othell Wilson. Edlin rejected. That's his 201st block of the year, Billy. What was sensational about that is Akeem shut off the play by Othell Wilson and still recovered to make that block. He led the nation in rebounding, block shots, and field goal percentage. And he's even increased those totals since coming into tournament play. Edlin trying to set a screen for Othell Wilson. Carlisle, a very intelligent player, always seemingly under control. The oldest player in the tournament at 24 years of age. Wilson, that's a long ways. And a good defense by Reed Geddes at six foot seven. He really got a hand up on Othell Wilson. They get it down quickly to Reed Geddes in the corner. Virginia not able to get any second shot so far, and obviously that's one of the things Houston has a big advantage with that front line of theirs. Virginia's rebounding has improved, especially in tournament time, but they don't expect to get the advantage. Let's go back to that block by Akeem Olajuwon. Well, what's going to be so impressive to realize how quick he is? Now watch him go over and help out on Othell Wilson, gets Othell to make the pass, and then comes right back against Edlin, a quick player to make the block. A sensational defensive move. This man with the ball is the biggest improvement in the Houston team. Alvin Franklin, Reed Geddes from the corner. Now, Gary, when Virginia's patience is going to be tested. Houston getting off the box very well here early, getting shooting from a lot of different people. Virginia trying to get that first one down. Virginia is 0 for 4 from the field. Houston 3 of 5. Good touch pass. Coming out of there is Young, and he's going to be fouled. The foul will go on Jim Miller. Now, Terry Holland trying to keep his ball club calm right four, here because Jim you do Miller have a chance to get blown out first. early if you can't get that first basket to drop, and Houston seems to be playing very patiently themselves. There's a 1-2-2 zone by Virginia. 
packed way back inside to try to shut off Akeem. He walked backing in and he walks with the basketball. First turnover against Houston. You can see that zone packed in. Now Akeem's got to realize that and start pumping the ball back outside until things loosen up for him. This is a veteran Virginia team. They have four seniors on it. Terry Holland called them the classic overachievers. Now Wilson making an all ACC second team pick. The others, Edlin, Carlisle, as it goes into Polities. Beautiful shot, and there was the half hook that he did so well against Indiana. Really, the, the key shots that put Virginia in the Final Four. Alanis has come out of his shell. Early in the year, very shy. He had a confrontation with Akeem in that first game, but he said, I'm going after him today. No matter where Akeem sets up, both Alanis and Edlin are very aware of him in the back line of the zone. That ball was touched by Virginia, so Houston can reset it. Six to two, the Cougars with the lead. Akeem really moving Polonese out inside. He's got the spot. Polonese from that sandlot ball of New York. He's in there tough. He's a street fighter. And Wicked Win Winslow is looking for the lob pass because Edlin and Polonese are paying so much attention to Akeem Olajuwon that he's going to be open for the lob. Again, very good patience by a Houston team that really hasn't been labeled as having a lot of that. Michael Young, very difficult shot. He has four of Houston's eight points. And he has a good feed in addition to that. So Michael Young is coming out of the box very well. And mentally, he had to have a good start. But Guy Lewis had a meeting yesterday, and he said, Michael, I want you shooting the ball. If you shoot it from too far out, I'll let you know about it. But other than that, go out and shoot it. Reed Geddes really causes some problems in that zone. That shot's not there. Alanese, but Michael Young cannot save the ball. It will be Virginia's basketball. We have a timeout with 14.05 to go in this first half. The host city of Seattle. They've been so gracious. Magnificent facility here, sold out. We'll get the attendance later. Expected to be over 38,000. Virginia is one of six from the field. That's 17%. That's an excellent pass. Virginia not hitting from the perimeters, and obviously that's their whole case today. They have got to hit from the perimeter early in the ball game to stay in it. They will never see a man-to-man -man if they continue to shoot like that, right? Here's Akeem, and that ball is going to go off of Polonies. Akeem trying to make the play on the inside, almost an impossible pass, and Akeem has got to start realizing that they're surrounded in the three people. Here's Geddes, who last year used to come off the bench for this inbounds play, and of course this year a starter. It's off the Cavaliers again. And you see that little pick inside between Young and Akeem. Akeem would love to see a lob pass. Reed Geddes, six foot seven, the junior, into Michael Young. Michael Young is back on track. Doing a great job. I mentioned the North Carolina game where he only scored two. Remember last year against NC State, he only had six. But he is really coming out strong so far. He has six of the ten for the Cougars, who now lead it ten to two. Othell Wilson wide open. Miller didn't get him the ball. Winslow the nice steal, steal, but Polonese comes back and re-steals it. Jim Miller, they need his outside shooting, as they do this man, Carlisle. I look, I look for Othell Wilson to start putting it up. Here's Miller. Jim Miller, who had the strong performance against Indiana. His best game this year is a 23-point performance against North Carolina. He's been ill. He's had some flu difficulty, but gaining that strength. Of course, he's the MVP of the Eastern Regional, so he has really been on a hot streak and playing solid. Alvin Franklin now, he can hit that shot very effectively. Here we see both teams playing the zone. The big difference is the fact that Houston can afford to pressure the ball more because they have Elijah on back to play the safety man. Fans starting to try to pick up the tempo, but Virginia, with all this experience, probably is going to be patient. There's Akeem, and that's what Polonese has to figure. He's going to have all afternoon long. Winslow. Ricky Wenzel, who shoots 57% for the year, but if you take his dunks away, Billy, he's shooting only 42%. Well, that's like saying if you take away Steve Alford's foul shooting. I mean, the guy's got great talent to go up there around the basket. Houston now has hit six field goals in a row and lead by 10. There's Wilson trying to make something happen. And he did make something now, happen. I look for Othell Wilson to start penetrating a little more. 
Polonese has got to realize he's playing against one of the best shot blockers that's ever played in college basketball. He's got to force that ball back outside. Wilson, who had 13 assists in one game, which tied the school record, a very fine assist there. Virginia changing now. They're going to a little box and one. They're playing Othell Wilson on Young. The other four fellas are playing the zone. Get us. Rebound by Eatland, their leading rebounder this year. Nice change by Terry Holland of the defense that time. Wilson, who has played so well in his four years at the 10.55 mark, trying to create some penetration. Good job by Wilson. Just a great one. But followed by Edlin. Edlin coming into this game, Billy, it hit 11 of his last 12 field goal attempts. Now, one of the problems of playing a zone, particularly if you start getting passive and allow a guy like Wilson to penetrate, he's getting inside the zone seams and therefore being able to get a lot of good shots for his teammates. Franklin missing, rebound by Polonese, and Wilson's kind of picked this team yep. up. He's taken over. Another nice penetration. Trying to draw the foul was Young. Miller missing, and Akeem, well, head to the other end of the floor. And Virginia's staying in that box and one. Coaches are wisely telling Reed Geddes there's been a change in defense because his teammates didn't realize it. He have four fellas playing his zone, and Othell Wilson playing Michael Young man-to-man. -man. He's trying to get some screens on the baseline to get the ball. There's Wilson on Young. Chest wow. him out that time. He has a foul. Franklin off to Akeem, and Akeem's basket will count, and he's been fouled. Now that's a play Akeem couldn't make a year ago, Gary, where he'd have the patience to just hang in there and not get called for walking or be a bull in the china shop, try to knock somebody down. Now watch it, he penetrates. Instead of going up and walking, he held his ground and then went up and got the three-point opportunity. Ricky Stokes, 15, checks in for the Virginia Cavaliers. He can also penetrate very well, as can Wilson. Carlisle sits down. Now, this is a problem for Houston, free throw shooting. Already, they've missed one. 16 to 8, Houston. Stokes pushes the ball up the court very well, but it makes Virginia awful small in that box and one to have Ricky Stokes out there. Let's see if they stay in the defense. Now, with Edelin down in the post. Goes to Polonese, and Polonese is fouled by Reed Geddes. Thing you like about Polonese, Billy, he has been rejected a couple of times, but it has hurt his confidence. He's so going right back at him. When he was recruited by Virginia, basically he was recruited in his first year to play defense and rebound. But this game right now at the 9:22 mark, Houston with a 16 to 8 lead, and now Terry Holland brings in a shooter, Tom Sheehy, number 22. He can fire up against the zone very effectively. But Gary, he's only been averaging about eight minutes and one point a game throughout the playoff period, and uh, they've got to get something out of him early to build up his confidence. They took Polonese out of there. Polonese sitting down. Here's Edlin now playing the pivot position. Nice pivoting by Edlin so he didn't get called for the walk. Wilson again creating, so creative with the pass. Well, there, Jimmy Miller wasn't quite ready to take the jump shot. You mentioned Sheehy. He carried this Virginia team in scoring in the month of December. That's the kind of shooting he can do. There's the big shot. You bring a guy in off the bench who you're counting on for some scoring. He's got to hit the early shots, just as in the case of Michael Young's confidence down early in this ball game, when he hit that first shot or two. Team that's not shooting well. Virginia's down by six. Akeem has it batted away. He had a dunk dunk on that one. Just did lose the handle. 837 first half Reed Geddes will inbounds baseline Michael Young Akeem tries to follow here comes Stokes. Now we've seen Ricky Stokes take the ball down on some big people. Well Wilson a complete player his first two points. Yeah, you notice they're back they're playing a diamond now a diamond in one as opposed to a box in one which just changes things around a little bit. Alvin Franklin has a funny looking spin on the ball, but it goes in. Franklin this year averaging over 12 points a game. He has four. Shows you the versatility of Othell Wilson. Now here he is today playing Michael Young, 6'7, a power player at forward. And just the last week he played against Steve Alford, the fine backcourt point guy for uh, Indiana. So very versatile athlete. They were a little reluctant to shoot the ball. 
They want to get something a little better now. Right now, they've got to get some weak side rebounding if you're going to shoot out on the perimeters. Kent Eland's playing out awful high, so there'd be nobody to rebound and miss shot. There it is. Very nice. What you call that, Gary, is a skip pass when you don't throw the ball to the teammate next to you and just go right over him. And Jimmy Miller wide open and caught the defense uh, not able to react. Miller had to be the center at the start of the year for Virginia when Edlin had his chin bone fractured. He loves the forward spot. Right. Young was fouled that time by Wilson who got a piece of it. Good call by the official. Young is finding himself that he probably could shoot over Othell Wilson if he could get a little room. Here comes Polonese back into the ball game. And it's going to be Wilson going out for a while. Nope, they're going to take Edlin out. I don't think we'll see Othell Wilson out of this ball game except for a very brief rest or foul trouble. Edlin will set down as Polonese comes back in alternating their two big men gave him a break in the first half with 701 left in it. Michael, Michael Young has been struggling for the free throw line. 65 percent free throw shooter. He should be a lot better than that Gary. He has an excellent release on his shot. The leading scorer this year in the Southwest Conference fourth all time scorer in that conference. He had this year 21 20 point games and the highest score of anybody in the final four. An individual performance. 1914 Houston with the lead. That zone starting to come out more and more each time down the court because they can count on Elijah one back there to protect the middle. Franklin a little bit overly concerned about the ball going into Polonies. I believe uh, Akeem can handle him by himself. Stokes and Wilson, they call them the Blitz brothers. Their ability to play defense. Here's Sheehy who had an earlier shot. That ball was partially blocked by Winslow. Winslow, the Southwest Conference Newcomer of the Year. It's 6'8", a freshman. He shocked Sheehy how quickly he got up in the air. You can see that zone is really packed, and Reed Geddes can take a shot if he'll put it up. Followed by Young. Michael Young up there with a the follow tip. He has nine points. But there's no way Wilson can stay with him on the board. So big difference in size. Othell at six foot. Michael Young, six seven. At halftime, one of the grand men of all time in the coaching profession, Ray Meyer, will be with Brent Musburger. Stokes has a tough catch by Sheehy and a nice pass to Polonese. The two freshmen inside combining for that basket. That was beautiful work against the zone. Good penetration by Stokes. You'll see him going on the inside. Good penetration. Not real good defense by Houston, but this is an excellent bounce pass inside. Nice play. That's only the second team foul against Houston as Rick Carlisle comes into the ball game. Jim Miller will sit down. Six points for Polonese. The chance now for the three-point play. Getting up there around a 60% foul shoot. It's amazing to see how much improvement he's had in the mental aspects of the game also. He has really come on well as a freshman. However, this Virginia team is shooting only 55% from the free throw line in tournament play. They leave Geddes alone. Polonese there again. You can see Polonese's game picking up. He has four rebounds. It's going to be a foul on Geddes. There is Stokes, and if you're scouting Virginia, when he gets the ball on the semi-break, he is going to try to go now ahead and score. He'll not be denied by bigger people. He goes in actually trying to get fouled. Doesn't worry about the shot at all, and normally he does get fouled on the play. Ricky Stokes, all five foot eight of him. This is his 134th game, a West Virginia record, breaking that set by Ralph Sampson. He's a good free throw shooter. He's 81 percent. Guy Lewis, his third straight trip to the Final Four. Last year he got to that championship game. That's long also. Big break for Virginia. She he can't hold on to the ball. Ricky Stokes really upset with himself. He doesn't normally, and nor does any other 80 percent free throw shooter in this two in a row. He was 26th in the country this year in free throw shooting. Here's that zone again. Back in there. Carlisle really trying to help out on Akeem Elijah one. 
There's a key hasn't touched the ball all that much but he effectively does this time. That looks like a little triangle in two. Three fellas playing his own two playing man to man. Four points for Elijah Juan, 23 17 Houston with the lead. A lot of experience out there in the floor for Virginia in the right places. Well, and he's working hard, but he's got a lot to work against in there. You notice how Akeem stays right behind him. Big shot by Sheehy. He's got to hit those open ones. He's missed two in a row now. Right. Got to check the defense out right now. We now have four minutes, as you see, coming up left in this first half of play. Very unusual defense by Virginia right now. Oh, what a steal. That was Stokes off to Wilson. Wilson, the all-time steals leader at Virginia, and Winslow rejected it. Put it mildly. He is so quick off his feet. They say he's a better jumper than Clyde Drexler, and you know how good Clyde the Glide was a year ago for Houston. Now Carlisle switches, and Othell Wilson gets back on. On Young. Michael Young, that's oh, his post shot. up. He does that so effectively. Tough shot. He is fading out, turning against his body and still hit the shot. Othell has to look at it. That was a great shot. Second team All-American now has 11 points. 25-17, the Cougars. Gary Holland could not, since 81, get to the Final Four with Ralph Sampson. This year, the surprise team in this Final Four picture. But Carlisle, Carlisle not shooting well. Well, and Gary, Virginia getting the shot down on that baseline. Wide open shots, can't hit them. This defense is really complicated to figure out because nobody's playing Reed Geddes at all. He's got wide open shots and he won't take them. Winslow, Carlisle got the ball away from Michael Young. Here comes Othell Wilson again. That looked like... Iona all over again. That was the shot, almost exact replay of Virginia's win over Iona. Now, here's the defense that Virginia's playing. Not guard and Reed Geddes at all. You've got Carlisle helping out on Elijah Juan. Wilson is playing Michael Young man to man. Nobody's guard and Reed Geddes. That's the same play as before, but not the same result. Off it comes to Stokes, to Carlisle. Carlisle and Winslow almost batted that one away. Well, what Virginia's doing real, really well now, Gary, they're pacing the game. When they get the half-court situation, they're playing very nice and controlled. But when they have the fast break, they're taking advantage of it. For a team that started out shooting 17%, Virginia trails by only four and maybe by two if they convert this time. Carlisle, nice catch. Great catch. There's Polonese. He got away with it. The team was shocked a little bit that the ball went inside. Guy Lewis has got to be upset with his offense, but what's happening? The Mickey Mouse defense by Virginia is throwing Houston's offense completely off stride. Reed Geddes has got to take some shots. And you can see the Virginia bench pick up their confidence. It's a completely through the whole course of that team. You can see their confidence picking up. Well, you can see that Ricky Winslow is no factor out there. He's not going to take any jump shot. There's five men standing around the key. It's Geddes that's got to move into the top of the key and take a jump shot. He can get an 18-foot shot here. The team in this game has not been a factor offensively. Four points. See, Virginia's not even playing Winslow. He's standing out there 22 feet from the basket. Nobody even guarding him. Now he moves in a little bit, but Geddes has got to take a shot. They know that Winslow likes to dunk, and that's all. And so, as you say, they just backed off of him. Now, I can't believe that Houston doesn't go ahead. That's walking on Geddes. He almost moved his foot, didn't yep, he? He definitely moved his pivot foot. Virginia has really backed it in. There they get it into that's the big foul. Oh, and that's going to be a foul on Elijah Wong. I think it be a smart move for Houston to take a timeout and illustrate for their team, for the ball club, just exactly what's happening to them. Well, Gary, we're going to see right here on the play. Reed Geddes not being guarded at all. And all of a sudden, the ball's going to go into Akeem Olajuwon, and you'd think he's the best friend of any Virginia player because there's five men going to be surrounding him right there. He charges. Now, if you're Houston during that timeout, you've got to realize that you're looking at a Mickey Mouse defense. It is not traditional basketball. So if Virginia's going to give you something, you've got to take advantage of, of it. And what Virginia's giving in wide open shots to Reed Geddes and also to Winslow. 
Virginia's on a 6-0 streak, and they may take the last shot of this first half. They're going to take the last shot. Very wise move. And when you look up at the score, right now it's going to be a 50-point type game, and that's exactly where Virginia wanted to be. Now, what Virginia likes to do is to get that ball in Othell Wilson's hands for that last shot. There it is on the way, and Geddes comes up with it. Almost fouled by Wilson, and that will be the end of our first half of play. Virginia opened the game. They went four and a half minutes without scoring, and then Houston finished the game going three and a half minutes without scoring. Well, remember Virginia against Syracuse. They, the score was four to two after they played about six minutes, so they've been very patient. Now Houston's starting to trap out of that prep, out of that uh, zone. Othell Wilson has tied this ball game up. Wilson was six points. Houston went to the 2-3 zone, but then they started to do some trapping. Virginia wisely got the ball in the right man's hands. Back. Virginia back to the box and one right now with Othell Wilson on Young. Houston needs that initial basket. Tough shot by Franklin. Coming out of there is Carlisle. Akeem thought he was fouled on the play. Yeah, Looks no, around, but to no avail. No time to worry about talking to officials. Virginia's a hard team to track. Steal attempt by Young. Wilson showing his quickness, and he is fouled by Akeem. Now, Othell Wilson did not try to score that time. He was looking for a shot attempt, but really not worrying about scoring as much as he was creating a foul. Now, watch this great play by Othell Wilson. He sees Akeem, so he tries to go right up in him and get the foul. That's the second foul on the seven-footer. Wilson at the free throw line. 71% free throw shooter. This is quite a comeback for Othell Wilson also in this respect. Everybody remembers in the beginning of the year, Othell Wilson was benched by Terry Holland for his attitude problems, but he has really come back with great leadership here at the end of the year. Virginia with their first lead of the ball game, 27-25. We played a minute in the second half. Virginia packing that zone back. When will Reed Geddes pull in and start taking some shots? He's not even looking at the rim right now. You've got to force that defense to play you. There's Akeem. Look at the shirts around him. Nice pass off, though, to Winslow. Winslow. Winslow was behind the backboard when he got that pass. Winslow was six points. In all fairness to Geddes, he is not feeling real well. He has a fractured gum underneath his nose, and he's been a lot of pain. He's put some ice in his mouth in practice yesterday. So maybe he doesn't feel like taking that outside shot. Well, Gary, in no time now to worry about having a sore throat or a sore, a sore gum. I mean, you've got to put that shot up. And if you put it up, your team is in excellent shape to rebound. 27 all, Miller in a little difficulty, and the team digs it out. No place for Jimmy the Miller to go down that, that middle with the key there. Three turnovers against the Cavaliers. Oh, there's a solid screen set by Franklin, trying to screen for Young. Now watch, you'll see it again. Solid screen by Franklin, that's actually a foul. A time deflected out to Carlisle. Colin East wants the ball. He's had that strong first half. That's pumped up his confidence. He's getting the team's attention a little more now. The team before was just actually playing the ball, not worrying about Polonies. Steal attempt by Franklin. Ah! He challenges Akeem. Akeem got the best of that. Again, Virginia makes two critical mistakes trying to go down the middle against Akeem. They're better off taking penetration and kicking the ball out. Virginia will have the basketball. 16-20 left in the semifinal game to follow this one, Georgetown and Kentucky. See Othell Wilson having a little talk to Polonese as they walk down the court. <laughs> kind of interesting. And that's why I think Houston should be coming out, putting some pressure on Virginia. They've got superior all-around athletes, and they're back there playing Virginia's game. You get the feeling they're lulling Houston into something here. Here is Miller against Akeem. He had to change the shot. Edlin with the rebound. Othell Wilson. There's oh, Akeem with another rebound. Great rebound by Akeem, using his body well. Akeem is really hanging in there on the defensive end, but they're not able to do something at the other end of the floor. Now, with this defense that Virginia's taking, and Houston not taking advantage of the shots, 
Hakeem has really been no factor offensively because Virginia's packed right around him. Here he is. Look at four men around him. He's fouled this time. That was a fine pass by Geddes. Geddes has the courage to go in there with the ball. That's what they like about him. Jimmy Miller with the foul. Yeah, his you second. watch. There'll be four men around Hakeem the minute he touches the ball. Everybody turns and comes and collapses right on him. There's not going to be any offense there for Hakeem. You've got to take the perimeter shot. Jim Miller out of the West Virginia area where he was Mr. Basketball his senior year. Akeem will miss the free throw earlier, able to hit this one. Every time I think of Akeem, I marvel at the recruiting story. He shows up in New York, it's a little bit too cold. Eventually takes a cab ride to see Guy, Guy Lewis for the first time. Has to be one of the all-time great recruiting stories. A former soccer goalie from Nigeria. Houston's got the lead back, they lead by one. Now with Ricky Stokes in the game, Virginia can spread it out a little bit more. They've got good perimeter shooting with Wilson and Miller on the wings. Don't be surprised to see Stokes split those fellas and go right down the center. Boy, he looks tough in there. He elbowed Winslow out of the way to receive that pass. And he's talking to the official right now. Look at him. Well, Kenton's built himself up a great deal in upper body. Miller has a bat away. Franklin will be given the foul. It's a fortunate foul for Virginia because Jimmy Miller was uh, just about a half a second away from a three-second violation. That's the first foul. See the tournament scoring. You're going to be hard-pressed to get to that today. 28 points now for Houston. Houston has only three points in their last eight and a half minutes of play. That's going back to the first half. But you create an offense with your defense. And right now, Houston's not doing that. They're putting no pressure on Virginia. And Virginia's playing their tempo of basketball game. Jim Miller with six points. The lead goes back to the Cavaliers. And look at this. Virginia comes out and traps Houston one time. And that left Akeem Elijah on one on one with Polonese. Yet it's not shooting with confidence. Akeem with the rebound. Five for Akeem. There's Franklin after breaking up by Wilson. What a play by Othell Wilson to tap it to himself. Polonese. A little out of control that no. time. Akeem with the rebound. Mental mistake by Othell Wilson there. You don't want to pass the ball to a big man on the break who's not used to handling it. Michael Young. Oh, oh, see if that'll oh, count. They're waving it off. Akeem over the back. That's his third foul. Excellent call by the official. Akeem came down, just rolled on the shoulders. Virginia got a big break there. And so foul number three. So the seven footer will have to be a little cautious now. We'll see it. Akeem's going to ride right on the shoulders of Polonese. He dunks it through, but an excellent call by the official. Strokes will up, walk it up at the 1350 mark. Gary, I don't know how much longer Guy Lewis can go back in that zone without coming out and putting a little pressure on Virginia. Akeem batted it out, but to Wilson. Miller had the same shot a moment ago. It went in. Othell Wilson was looking for that lob. Polonese had it, but not with Akeem down in the middle. 29-28, Virginia with the lead. That's what Stokes is going to have available, is to just to go right down the center and then kick out to the side. As Houston has got their two fellas out front spread way out. And to Miller, they may go after Akeem now with three fouls. He's fouled out of eight games this year. Franklin to Young. Young showing great speed. 6'7", powerfully built, tremendous quickness. The pros say he'll be one of the top seven picks this year. And, it, and that showed the kind of uh, quickness that Houston has, but back in that very passive zone, they haven't been able to take advantage of it. Young with 13 points, Houston by one. Stokes, very difficult, oh, and he got it. He created a shot there, wasn't even available. Mr. Stokes, Rainbow. first two points of the game. And look at, here's... Here's Virginia going after them in a full-court man-to-man press. Now, that leaves Elijah on and Polonese one-on-one -on -one down the other end if Houston can get it to him. Gettis having some difficulty. Stokes picks up the foul. Stokes with his first, only the second team foul against the Cavaliers. Ricky's brother, uh, outstanding player, Bobby Stokes at Virginia, led Terry Holland to the, or was one of the leaders of Terry Holland's first championship in the ACC, now a doctor. He's looking over here at you now. They call him pesky, and that's what he is. And now a push-off foul against Houston. Now, that, what that foul's recreated 
throughout this second half in an attempt to get Michael Young open, Houston set some wicked solid screens on Othell Wilson. Now he's got the body to withstand it, but he got knocked to the floor that time. Get us with his third foul, so now two of the Cougars with three fouls each. Fourth team foul against Houston. Get us, I really believe he's affected by that injury in his mouth. He has not played the way we've seen him play in the past. Remember a game earlier this year, he had 15 assists in it. There's a steal. Winslow. He's going to back it out wisely. 12 minutes left in this game. Houston, by the way, has yet to substitute in this game. Gettis, just not there for him. Akeem and oh, Scope stole away from him. Great pass. Miller. And as he hammered, now that going to get him goaltending. Basket, is there a foul? Nope, just goaltending, because that could have been Akeem's fourth. This is a great, great steal by Ricky Stokes on Akeem. Then he makes the pass to Jimmy Miller, and watch this crossover dribble right there, off the pass. Sensational play by Miller. He goes, I thought he was fouled. Boy, Akeem windmilled that right arm. I thought he was fouled. There's the play. Biggest lead of the game now, Virginia, by three. Young cuts it to one. I believe that should have been a foul in addition to that. During that replay, we had a shot at the other end. Michael Young hitting from the left-hand corner, and he cuts Virginia's lead to one. And Gary, when you start thinking about this zone defense, one of the things, if you're Terry Holland, you'd be a little nervous. You don't want to hold the ball out, because if you do, that may have Houston go ahead and come out aggressively defensively. Winslow pushing off on that pass intended for Edlin. That's his first foul. Now five team fouls against Houston. Neither one of these teams are good free throw shooting clubs. So if it comes down to that at the end, it's going to be an adventure at the free throw line. Hey, not good free throw shooting. Yes, okay. not. I'm still waiting for Houston to come out of that zone, start really going after Virginia. They've got to take the gamble. 11 minutes to go in this ball game, and they've been playing a passive zone the whole way. Tempo picked up there a little bit. I would think that would be to Houston's liking. And it picked up on the basis that Virginia is taking advantage of a fast break when it's there. Edlin and Winslow are kind of going after each other inside after that last foul by Ricky. He's a little upset. Yeah, I don't know why Winslow's hanging on to him because Edlin's not going to try to score from down in low. Jim Miller, that is a difficult shot at best. Ten points for Jim Miller, who's played so well in tournament play. And now that pressure to go ahead and make some outside shots for Houston is really starting to mount. Geddes needs one to go for it. There Good. it is. Big play. Big play by Reed Geddes. Four points for Reed Geddes. He's averaging a little over that a game, but he has the ability to streak shoot. He gets a hot hand. He could really help this Houston club. He's been playing the point throughout the uh, entire ball game. Now he's moving down in the wings, which puts Alvin Franklin up in the top. Much better situation for Houston, because Franklin will penetrate down the middle. One point lead now for the Cavaliers. Inside, 10 minutes left in the game. Good. Look how passive the Houston zone is. Everybody's standing up, straight-legged, no pressure on the ball whatsoever. Back inside the foul line, definitely to Virginia's advantage. Okay, though, Winslow and Edlin are pushing a little bit on each other, but you're right, the rest of them are just kind of flat-footed right now. And Winslow just showing a little bit of immaturity there because there's no need to get in a pushing battle with Kent Edlin to pick up a cheap foul. And you can see how quick Houston is when they do go out and put some pressure on the ball. Stokes almost lost that one. 35 34, the Cavaliers in no hurry now. Now you wonder when Houston going to make that move to come out and get him. Wilson to Stokes. That's been their best play, Bill, is Wilson penetrating and creating something. And that was a case where I thought Stokes would put it on the, board, on the floor. One more dribble, and he'd have had Othell Wilson for a good wing shot. Again, the onus to me is on Houston. They're the favorite team. Of course, as far as the rules are concerned, they must come out and get Virginia, but I really think the onus is on them to try to create tempo. They knew Virginia was going to play this kind of game. Franklin racing out there, almost in frustration that time as he went for the steal. Only once today did Houston try to come out in a half-court zone trap, 
They haven't come out to play man-to-man -man with good, tough, aggressive defense yet today. Jim Miller, pass intended for Edlin. He can't handle it. Akeem on the floor. Out of that. It's going to be off of who? Who are they going to get it to? They're going to get it to Houston. That was a change. The referees did not agree on that call. One referee pointed Houston, the other referee pointed Virginia. And I'll be honest with you, I think the ball should have been Houston. Billy, some debate on that last flurry under the basket. Who was the ball off of? The ball actually hit Jimmy Miller's foot. I thought it should have been Houston's ball. One official did motion for Houston, the other said for Virginia. In my opinion, Hank Nichols, the fellow under the basket, had a better view, and it should have definitely been Houston's ball. But the Cavaliers will have it at the 8-13 mark. I don't notice Jimmy raising his hand saying it, I hit my ball out. Does it? You know, an interesting it, stat in the second half, Billy. Virginia, per possession, is taking 35 seconds now. Well, they were at 24 seconds in the first half, and that's really caused not by Virginia, but by Houston. They're not putting the pressure on them. Let's see if they're coming out now. Cavaliers by one. Approaching eight minutes to go, Miller. Rebound, Franklin Stokes gets a piece of it, hell ball, and it will go to Houston. Well, Houston does finally get the ball back, no damage done. And with a chance to take the lead. That was a wide open shot for Jimmy Miller. Virginia got a good one. Miller was hitting those in Atlanta. There's your time left in this game. The winner, of course, to play the winner of Georgetown, Kentucky. The game to follow this one. Uh, Franklin's got some wide open shots now at the top of the key. Dennis has them down on the wings. Dennis again. Use the glass very expertly. And for Geddes, six points. Smart move to get down on the wing and to take the shot when it's made available. Now, let's see if Houston's going to come out at all. Another stand right in the zone. With the lead, Virginia must go ahead and move the ball inside the hash marks, but still they don't have to put up a shot. Like they said to Terry Allen this morning, with five minutes to go, would you mind being one point down? And he'd say, no, I'll go ahead and have that position and play the last five minutes at that spot. Remember, so they've got what they wanted. Billy, they started tournament play with a 17 and 11 record. That was the worst record of any of the at-large teams coming in. And look at them now with 21 wins and coming close to getting into this championship game, even though they trail by one now. Well, the NCAA champ with the most losses in the, in the season was last year's NC State. They had 10. I think a great stat. In Johnny Wooden's 10 years of winning the NCAA championship, all of those 10 years, his team's never lost 11 games. Is that unbelievable? Wilson, the team of the rebound. Eight rebounds for Elijah Watt. Let's see. Now, Houston is not a delay-type ball club. They keep playing. Last year, they tried to go into delay. Wasn't very effective. It's not in their repertoire. And St. Louis, they went right at him, even though they had that precarious lead. And there's a foul on Stokes. There's Vicky Stokes charged right into Alvin Franklin, who had the lead on him. Stokes knew he had committed the foul. Foul is charged to number 15. And it's Vicky only the third team foul team's third. against Virginia, so Houston will not have the pressure of free throw shooting for some time. Well, Franklin, 80% free throw shooter, so if Houston wants anybody in the line, it would be Franklin. He was second in the conference. Hakeem will lean in, the basket will count, and a foul. Big play. Can you imagine Hakeem Olajuwon was left totally unguarded on the out-of-bounds situation? Virginia just made a mistake team-wise defensively. Seven points. The foul now will be registered against Stokes. It's third. He's picked up two in a hurry. A king coming in here, Billy, averaging 23 points a game, only seven in this game, and it's got to be a frustrating type game for a seven-footer. Well, he hasn't touched the ball. Virginia's taken that away from him completely. 39-35, the Cougars, six minutes to go. Wilson in a little trouble, but got rid of it. Miller, he's got to hit that shot. Now Houston's starting to really gain some advantage. That'll be Virginia's That's ball. That's right. A smart play by Wilson. He got the hell ball, the alternating hell ball, this time awarded to the Cavaliers. Carlisle coming in. An excellent substitution now by Terry Holland. He's got to get another perimeter shooter, taking Stokes out, bringing Carlisle in. So now they can surround the zone with Othell, Wilson, Miller, and Carlisle. Carlisle did not shoot well in that first half. He's one of six. But they'd like to get his shooting back on now. Holland 
follow Edlam. That'll be a foul on Kenton Edlam. Virginia getting a little frayed here, Gary. Not a good shot by Olden Polonese. Houston bench, which has not been a factor in this game, as guys stand with those starters. And here's where Polonese got a little frustrated. He couldn't find somebody to pass to, so just took a bad shot. And there was Adrian coming right over the back of Michael Young. Houston with. Oh, what a screen! On Othell Wilson knocked right to the ground. I get us, but there was no call. Used his elbow to set the screen. The official was right in front of him. Polonese in the second half, Billy, has not scored or picked up a rebound after getting nine points and five rebounds in the first half. Franklin's got some shots. I'm surprised he's not putting the ball on the floor and taking his jumper from the foul line. Right? It's available to him. Right there. He won't look at the basket. How long can they stay in this zone, trailing 39-35? Well, I think Virginia will be satisfied to stay in the ball game just as they are down to three minutes or so. Maybe even one. Franklin's got the shot. Franklin has been content to pass off. He has seven assists in this game. Kind of amazing. He won't put it up. There's Hakeem. Donald is going to go on Virginia, and Othell Wilson cannot now, believe it. Now, there's what gets Othell in some trouble. That kind of a dis demonstrative show is the kind of thing officials don't like to see, and the officials point to him, tell him he better calm down. Didn't want to see him get a technical at this time. Well, he fouled out of that Indiana game, you recall. Ricky Stokes will come in, but right now we have a timeout. Team fouls. You see Houston has committed the five. We mentioned Virginia. Virginia much more aware now of Akeem Olajuwon in the out-of-bounds situation. Well, you wondered how long they could stay with what they were doing. The man-to-man -man is Polonese and Akeem. Let's see if Houston recognizes. Goes inside to Akeem on his play. There's, well, there's Wilson. a Wilson again getting knocked down, though, Whistle. That's twice he's tried to draw the foul. Now, Carlisle is now on Young. They got lost on the exchange. Virginia, tough team to stall the ball. Blocks. Even with the block, Akeem with a follow. Team does that so well, Gary. He keeps his eye on the ball. Normally, you turn your head and go for the rebound. He kept his eye right on the ball and was able to get the, the flex. He remembers, though, that North Carolina State shot, though, where he didn't keep his eye on the ball, and he does not want to get in that position again. The Lorenzo Charles dunk. 41-35, Houston with the lead. 3.44 left in the game. Now, time-wise, Virginia really has to get, start thinking about putting up some good jump shots. A little bit quicker than that 35-second possession they've been using so far in the second half. Wilson using the screen by Polonese. Carlisle, who's not shooting well, passes it up. Wilson still trying to create inside. Here's Carlisle again. Good shot. You notice Kent Needlin kids about it, but he says his shooting range is three to four inches. He does not <laughs> look for the shot. Speaking of Needlin, he's just committed a foul. Now, that is 17 fouls. And from here on in, Houston will be shooting free throws. Kent Needler will be going on to law school. Another walk-on. Isn't it amazing? We've got Final Four competition. We've got two key players in the game, both walked on. Hakeem Olajuwon at Houston and Kent Needler at Virginia. Here's one of the two players Guy Lewis wants at the line. See those free throw percentages? He and Alvin Franklin are their two best free throw shooters. Stokes is in the lane. And Hakeem has picked up the foul. Now, now, Ricky Stokes stepped in the lane before the shot was taken. The official, yes, the official waited to see whether the shot was missed or made, then called the violation, which is the proper technique, but it was Stokes who stepped in the lane. And that saved a foul on Akeem Olajuwon. That would have been his fourth. Oh, and now Akeem <laughs> takes it away. He fell into the lane. Well, you, I tell you, you, you really have to ask here. We'll see right here. Ricky, Ricky Stokes had stepped into the lane before the shot was ever released. On this particular place, Dennis faked, faked out Akeem Olajuwon. At the other end, in live action, Akeem blocked the shot, and Stokes commits the foul. And Akeem, after a first half well below his standards, has now started to play like the All-American he is. And now we're going to get to that Houston excitement, which is, Adventure. let's go to the foul line the last three minutes of the game. 
Well, for the year, this Houston team is shooting 62%. They're just about that in the last three minutes as we approach three minutes. For Houston, number 20, Alvin Franklin shooting. It'll be Franklin going to the line. Now, on that last uh, exchange by Reed Geddes, what he did, uh, Gary, he actually faked out his own teammates by a little extra double clutch when he was on that foul line. One and one for Franklin. He gets the roll. Franklin was second in the Southwest Conference, shooting 80%. He has five points. Well, when you think back, and Franklin was behind both Dickens and Giles last year when we saw Houston for the first time up at Syracuse. He's really come along very well. He's second team all conference point guard and going to be a great player next year. And he was the guy as a freshman trying to win it, and that has not happened. A freshman point guard but this year as a sophomore, he's been the biggest improvement. Jimmy Miller realizing Akeem was right behind him. Carlisle followed by Miller. Good effort oh! by Jim Miller. Oh, what a play! It in. He used the rim to be a defensive hand against Akeem Olajuwon. That was a great play by Jimmy Miller. Jim Miller, who's had mono, he's had the flu, he's had every kind of physical problem, but playing strong. Now watch him come in. He keeps the ball alive here for himself. It gets caught under the rim. Now he uses the rim to go on the other side so Akeem Olajuwon could not chase him. Great spin move. And when you have a guy lurking around like Akeem, you got to use the rim and everything else you can to keep the ball from him. That's a very wise move because he can't go through the metal up there, obviously. So Virginia still very much in it. And I would imagine they're talking about sending Houston to the free throw line. Well, with 235 to go, Gary, Houston is wanting to keep the ball in the hands of Reed Geddes and Alvin Franklin because those are the fellows that are 80% free throw shooters. They also have to think very seriously about getting the ball inside to a team whenever Virginia goes into chasing man-to-man -man defense. And if you're Virginia, you're getting down to the point now where you're going to have to go a lot more man-to-man -man zone. Billy, at the other end of the floor, Houston is huddling up again. Now, they've been going out on the floor each time. Now, I haven't seen them do that earlier this year. They're always in the bench area. Well, sometimes coaches go out to get away from noise and distractions. They feel that it's uh, very uh, much quieter out there. But in this particular case, you know, you don't have a, you're not at a, a hostile crowd situation, nor is there a band right behind them. So I don't know what Guy Lewis is thinking about there, but the fella has won an awful lot of ball games, Gary. 561. That's right, fifth active uh, coach. Actually, now he moves to fourth with Ray Meyer retiring, so he's the fourth uh, winning us. Houston still has not substituted in this ball game. 235 left in the game. Houston 43, Virginia 39. Broken nicely, but then a reach oh. up by Wilson. Ricky Stokes had to be careful. He jumped up in the air, almost carried that ball back court. This is what Virginia does so well with the Blitz brothers. Stokes and Wilson coming after you when they're behind. That was Othell Wilson jumping up, deflecting that ball to give Stokes an opportunity. Othell's got the jumper. He buries it, and we're back now to a two-point game. It's interesting. Evelyn on Young putting some size there. The trap. There is no five seconds in the backcourt. There is no five seconds in the backcourt. And everybody's thinking it's a five-second call, but you can't have it back there. You've got a full 10 seconds to get the ball over half court. So that's one of the very weird things you, you very seldom see in college basketball is a, a five-second count. Fans thought it was a five-second count in the backcourt. Carlisle has the turnover now. Gives Virginia a chance to tie it up at the 157 mark. Surprise Young didn't call a timeout. They have three left. Well, he had 10 seconds. What he should have done is just throw that ball up towards half court. He was surrounded by two men. Somebody had to be open. Hakeem was waving at the other end to no avail. See Franklin coming out showing his aggressive play. Amanis. A minute 35. You see the time. A two-point lead for Houston. Well, so far in the tournament, 12 games have been decided by two points or less, and it looks like this one could fall right in that pattern. That's a kick. Yep. They'll reset it out of bounds. And now look at Othell Wilson. He draws them all to him. He's talking to him as Alvin Franklin. A little free timeout. Yep. He's the coach on the floor, and rightfully so. For four years, he's directed the offense, and now a timeout is called. 
The road to the championship game. There's the vital statistics. Houston by two with a minute 21. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Guy and Lewis is probably saying, I've been in this business for 28 years in Houston, and it's not getting any easier. He was doing a little bit more than wiping the sweat off his brow with that little towel uh, show. Barry Holland, very poker face, but you can imagine he is churning inside. Now Houston showing the same defense they did from the outset with the same five players. Carlisle took the shot, Young with the rebound, and a foul will go on Edlin. He had to reach. Good, strong hands by Michael Young. Now the free throws. Here we go to the free throw situation. Good shot by Carlisle. See, nice blocking out by Akeem. Young goes up, he's got the good hands, and Edlin just knocked it away. For the year, Michael Young is shooting 66%. He struggled in St. Louis from the line. Of course, he was struggling in all his shooting game in that Midwest Regional. Gary has a team that's shooting 61%. Remember, at one point this year, they were under 50% as a team. As a it. Two men on the ball. Colonies is very smart to get his hands off the ball there by Carlisle. The big question is, can you ever win a championship and not be a good free throw shooting team? 43-41, Houston by two. Less than a minute, you see the time on the screen. Othell Wilson, a real key here with his penetration. Houston pick it up, boy, there he goes. Carlisle, a came up in his face. Carlisle misses again, a hell ball, and this Houston. will go to Houston. Now, normally, a ball club would be in their delay game right now. You can see Reed Dennis looked like he had a pretty good scratch in the back of his arm there, but normally you'd go to a delay game. Here's Dickens coming into the ball game. And now the first substitution for Houston, number 14, Eric Dickens, a good ball handler. They get Winslow out. You've got a two-point lead and the ball. And let's see if Houston tries to hang on to it. Franklin looks like he will. He doesn't have a chance. Wilson on the steal. Othell Wilson, he's tied it up. Now. Here is Dickens, who just checked in. You don't want to foul if you're Virginia now. You want to make Houston try to beat you with a real score. Elijah Wan wants it inside. Dickens to a came oh, right a minute oh. traveling. Dickens traveled with the ball. Virginia probably, let's see if they take the time out. They got to take a time right here. Good move by Virginia to set up last second action. That there will it. give the Cavaliers one left. Virginia called it. Now, what happened? Othell Wilson called it. Terry Holland wasn't sure that he really wanted it. But that was that was a case where Houston just lost their patience completely. The only substitution that Guy Lewis has made is 14, and he makes a very critical turnover. Here's the walk by Akeem Olajuwon. He took the steps on the inside, and they were just too impatient. And here they come, the Blitz brothers, creating the steal. Super play by Othell Wilson. Franklin couldn't catch him. He actually twisted his ankle right there. Great layup by Wilson. Wilson this year in one game had seven steals. That is a Virginia record, but that was one of the bigger steals he's made in his career. Gary, think about this team in the NCAA tournament. Iona. Wilson goes and hits that bounding shot on the inside with his penetration. Then, of course, the win against Arkansas. Well, Wilson tries to go up for the shot. Robertson knocks it out of his hands. Carlisle gets it, hits the jump shot to win that one at the buzzer. And then Indiana, a game that could have very easily gone to Bobby Knight's Hoosiers, and Virginia came away with Edlin's great steal to win that ball game. And they survived the last shot of that game. So 15 seconds left. It's all even at 43, and the Cinderella team from Charlottesville, Virginia, continues to just amaze people, and Akeem, who said he wanted this time to come back for the third time and win it all, and now they're in a very precarious situation. Nobody expected to be Virginia to be here. Matter of fact, when they lost in the opening round of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament, there wasn't a lot of hope that they'd even be invited to the NCAA Tournament this year. The difficulty of their schedule had an awful lot to do with that, and of course, the quality of play of all the teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference allowed them to go five deep. Remember now, the last two years, the championship is won by an ACC team. Virginia would like to keep that going, and this team's looking more and more like the Wolf back of a year ago. Looks a bit. Guy Lewis is actually out on the floor now, talking to his ball club, five feet out on the court. Well, they're not going to call technical now. 15 seconds, here we go. 
Okay, now let's see the defense first. If if Houston goes to man to man, which it looks like they are, Othell Wilson will take this shot, or he'll take the move going one on one with whoever's guarding. They double teamed him with five seconds, broken up by a team. And Overtime. they call a timeout with one. Did they get it stopped? They should have. They should have some time left on the clock. Gary, what I think happened in Virginia right there was unfortunate for their, their deployment of their people. Othell Wilson got the ball in bounds, which then he tried to beat his man from 40 feet. That's very difficult. You like to have the ball in the hands of Othell Wilson without there, his dribble. Billy, there will be two seconds on the clock. They reset the clock, so they did get the timeout. Now, here's what I'm talking about. See, Othell Wilson's got the ball so far out, you'd rather have him get the ball for the first time without his dribble at the top of the key. Now, he's lost right now. Good double team. Boy, Balanese was wide open. Good hands by Elijah on inside. Geddes calls the timeout. The officials wisely put the two seconds back on the clock. And there's the time that they put back up. The clock operator did not stop it. It had expired, but very wisely, the officials have done a very good job here today. Get the time back on. Now, the All right, timeout Gary. situation, both have one left. Of course, if you go into overtime, you have one added to that total. Now, you've got a tough job if you're Houston. You got the ball about 70 feet from the basket. Are you going to try to throw that lob and have a team go for it? Or are you going to go ahead and just take a desperation half-court shot or down the sideline type shot? I think back to the University of North Carolina against Arkansas this year. Almost the same type of play when they tried to go down the sideline, get the ball to uh, Michael Jordan. But Houston really doesn't have a Michael Jordan type. You might think about saying, let's go for the alley-oop to a team. But the one thing you'd have to impress on him, don't push off when you're going up in the air to get the shot. And of course, if no one touches that ball and it goes out of bounds, then the other side, Virginia would have two seconds in to come back. In a much better place to put the ball in bounds. And of course, the clock does not start until the ball touches a player in bounds. I'd expect Houston to try to set up a play for Michael Young down the sidelines. Now we have another man coming into the ball game for this Houston team for the first time. Here, now you can see it's Alvin Franklin going to try to screen something for Michael Young. Here he is. Michael Young, you called it, but he does not get it. That showed you some range, didn't it? Marvin Alexander was the guy they brought in. We have not even seen him this year, a junior. He did not touch the ball. Young did. He missed it. And we have five minutes more in which to decide one of the teams for the championship. Our team will go up against Edlin. And what a final four this is going to be. Same fresh faces for Houston. With the exception of uh, just a couple of seconds, they have played, the starters have played the entire ball game. Edlin got the tip. I think he stole that one. Got it on the way up. And if you're Virginia, you're going to sit on this baby until you get exactly the shot you want in overtime. I wouldn't expect to see Virginia put up many shots at all if Houston doesn't come out and force it. We've seen so many teams this year been in multiple overtime games. Wake Forest that, uh, of course, Houston eliminated to get into this tournament. They were, what, five overtime games this year? 43 all. We now have 420 left in overtime. It's been a long time, Gary, since Houston has made a field goal that goes all the way back to four minutes to go in regulation time. So they've been five minutes without scoring a field goal. Elijah Wan got that last one. And it's really surprised me that Houston, this entire ball game, has never at least tried to go out and force Temple with a defense. There's Carlisle. He's not been shooting all that well, but he hits a big one there. He has six points, a two-point lead for the Cavaliers. Three minutes, 44 seconds left. And here, Virginia changing their defense a little bit. They're playing man-to-man. -man. Michael Young who tried to hit the one that wanted it overtime. Misses here. Holidays for the rebound. I was, I was really surprised to see Virginia come out man to man. Now, Virginia with the lead and the ball, you better believe they're going to show a little four corners type. This may help Houston. This may bring them out of their defense and really start using their athletic talent. Gary Hallman liked to have Stokes out there in this delay game. Of course, he doesn't have him in there now. Out it comes to Wilson. Carlisle, that surprise you? 
It did that he took the shot at all. That's what I think. And I'm that, surprised he took it. And it came particularly from the corner. Hakeem coming out there it wasn't really a good shot. I, I was surprised Virginia would take anything other than a layup, Gary. And they're in man to man. Edlin's playing young. Before, before the shot, 24. That'll be Polynesia. You can hear the instructions being barked out. That's only the first on Holden. That was a good push by Polonese, though, because if Hakeem had been able to go ahead and gather himself there, he definitely would have scored with a dunk. Now Elijah on this year, shooting only 53% from the free throw line. He's hit him well today. He can tie it up at the 2.51 mark. A very pleasant man, young man. His father and mother have never seen him play this game. Dead center, so throw all those statistics out the window. And now Houston looks like they're gonna change. They're in a 1-3-1 half-court zone trap now. A defense that really is gonna cause Virginia some problems because they got tremendous size. There's Miller having to catch up with it. The last overtime game in the semifinal round was in 1975, and UCLA beat Louisville 75 to 74. This is an excellent defense for Houston. They've got so much size on the wings and great leapers. Wow, surprising shot there. Same shot this time, the retrieve, and a nice job by Polnese. And Polnese tried to settle the ball club down. The freshman over there yelling out instructions. Miller had it broken up. He thought he was fouled. I believe he was. Winslow got a piece of it. I'm surprised Virginia put the ball down in the corners, Gary. Two minutes. Two minutes left in overtime. Now, Wilson on Franklin. What a challenge this is. Franklin has a great quickness. Look at the Houston bench, Billy, standing up. Virginia going man to man. A keen, beautiful pass. Winslow can't have it. And wait a minute, that's off Winslow. No, he changed his mind. Yeah, I would think so. That yep. has got to be off the Yep. Good move by the official. You don't expect a keen when he gets up to pass like that. And fortunately, Winslow was alert enough to stay with it. There is Michael Young. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. 17 points by Young. Two-point lead for Houston. A minute 37, you see it, left in overtime. Now Houston gets out of the 1-3-1 trap. They're going to pack it back in. I think that trap was really a good defense for them. You don't want to give Virginia any layups, but when you have that 1-3-1 trap and Akeem down inside, he's going to eliminate the layups. He's been reluctant to take the shot, has yeah, he? Nice job. Nice job by Young coming out on him. Carlisle just relaxing. It's amazing what difference experience makes. One minute to go. Miller. Winslow was in his face. A game with the rebound. Now, how long do you go before you foul him? Well, you try to go for the steals here. Othell Wilson try to get the steal on Franklin. Team backing in. Now, Virginia's got to put it up quickly here. Othell Wilson got to put it up quickly. Good move. Doesn't go, but he gets his own rebound. 22 seconds. Carlisle. He's fouled on his move by Ricky Winslow with 18 seconds left. Well, Winslow almost had to foul there, but he'd been better off going ahead and try to draw the charge. Foul is charged to Ricky Winslow. Big rebounds down the other end. Virginia really lost their composure in this overtime, Gary. Well, they didn't get a crack at it in regulation. That's probably the most disappointing thing to Terry Holland. They didn't get a shot off. And they, well, they took the shots from the corner, which was very, were very surprising against Houston when they had the lead. Stokes comes in. Barry Holland trailing by four with 18 seconds to go. Now, if they get these two fouls, you can believe that there's going to be a foul committed. Freshmen have to go to the line. Not a good free throw shooter. He has hit better in this tournament, though. He's hit 10 of his last 13, but for the season, you're right. There's Carlisle. It's a two-point game with 18 seconds. Okay, let's see who's going to get fouled. Michael Young, Carlisle commits the foul, and Young 
actually committed the foul with 18 seconds. No time even went off the clock. Well, Young did not shoot the ball well, as we saw in tournament play. You saw the statistics around 50 percent in the last three minutes. And so the man who has led him in scoring all year long, the senior, the captain, has a chance to really put this game in a great position. He's one of three from the line today. Hakeem Hakeem has has a rebound. Rebound. He should get it out of there. And it's going to be off of Hakeem's knee. Virginia has the ball with 15 seconds, and what an opportunity that was that went by the wayside. It really was not a good play by Hakeem. He should have got the ball back outside because all they needed was possession. Remind me of Dallas Carmagee's in the DePaul loss. Wilson's going to penetrate. You see the time. Wilson in trouble. Young's got it, and Houston's going to win it. 